Okay, in the first video we made our master tetramino actor, our falling block actor. And in this video I'm going to create a small playing area and introduce the functionality for the block to start falling or dropping automatically towards the playing area. Uh, so we'll start with that here. Let's create a shape, a cube, and I'm going to set the location to 0, 0, 0. And I'll set the scale here to maybe 15 by 15 uh, by 1 is fine. And uh, we'll need to add a directional light here. You can't see anything, so we'll add uh, directional light. And I'm just going to set the rotation here manually. Uh, so if I were to set this to minus 90 on the y-axis, that's the same as basically directly overhead or high noon. Uh, whoa, that's bright. Uh, and so I actually want to light up some of these front faces of these blocks as well, though. So I'm going to set this to maybe uh, minus 115 degrees. All right, and this uh, floor is a little bit bright. I'm going to select the floor, double click the material here, and maybe change the color to sort of a medium gray. All right, that's a little better. Uh, so now I'll introduce our functionality for the blocks to start falling. So I'm going to open up the falling block actor, and I'm going to use uh, the begin play node. I'm just going to drag this up a bit. And uh, we'll drag off of here and say set timer by event. And the event here, I'm going to drag back, say custom event, call it drop block. Uh, and for the time, uh, I'm going to say promote to variable. We'll call this drop speed. And I'll compile and set that to maybe 0.5. So it'll run every 0.5 seconds. I'm going to select looping here. And uh, return value, I'm going to promote to a variable called block dropping timer. That way we can clear that timer uh, later when we don't want to use that anymore. Okay, and so uh, what we want to do is first set a variable. I'm going to make a new variable here called should drop question mark. And we'll just set this to true. And then we'll iterate through all of our cubes here that make up the block and uh, see if they're touching anything. So the way we'll do that is drag the default scene root in here, get children components, and uh, I'll just drag here from children and say for each loop. All right, and for each of these components, I want to do a line trace for objects. And uh, we need to put in a start and an end point. And the start point is going to be, I'll drag from the array element, say get world location. So we'll start at the world location for each of these cubes. And the end point is going to be same as the start point, but minus, uh, we'll subtract 50 from the z axis. So it's basically just going to trace vertically downwards by 50 units from each cube. Basically to see if it's, anything's touching just below it or if it's touched anything. Uh, so object types here, I'll drag back and say make array. And we'll just leave this at world static for now. So our floor is a world static uh, object and it'll respond to this trace. And uh, we want to go from the return value now and say branch and see if we touched anything. Um, and if we did, then we just want to use a do once node. So we don't, uh, you know, if, if several of the cubes from this actor happen to land at the same time on another surface, we only need to do the following code once. And that's going to be set should drop uh, to false and uh, clear and invalidate the block dropping timer. OK. And so if this runs through all the line traces and uh, they're all false, then nothing will happen and should drop will still be true. So what we'll do is on the completed node here, I'm going to grab the should drop variable, say branch, and check if it's still true. And if it is, then we can add actor local offset. And uh, we'll subtract 50 from the z axis to move the actor down by 50. And now uh, if it's false, if it did, uh, if should drop has been turned to false, then we know the block has touched something. 
and we want to, what we'll do here is basically say, uh, we'll start off by just saying uh, spawn actor from class and uh, we'll spawn a new falling block. And for the transform, I'll split the pin here. And for the location, I'm gonna just set 0, 0, and 1000, uh, so which is where we put our original block in the map. So basically, once the block lands on the ground, it's just gonna spawn a new block in the same uh, starting position at 1000 on the z-axis. Uh, so let's check it out so far, to see what we've got. And I'll hit play here. Just wait for this to hit the floor. Okay, and so we can see it's stopped here uh, at the floor, but it's stopped just a little bit above the floor. It looks like about half the width of one of those cubes. And we can also see that the cubes don't respond to each other. They're only responding to the floor. All right, so let's check it out and uh, fix those couple of issues. Uh, so the floor, we'll just raise this by 25. That'll fix that problem pretty easily. We'll put 25 onto the uh, Z axis here. Uh, and then the cubes, uh, when the blocks are falling, we're only looking for world static type objects. And the cubes themselves here are, these are set, if I look in the uh, details here under collision, they're uh, dynamic objects. These are world dynamic objects. So that's why they're not interacting with each other on the line trace. And that's fine. What we actually want to do here is, I want to convert these actors when they land, the, when the falling block lands, I want it to convert from a single actor to four individual actors, one for each of the cubes. And that's so that later when we go to do clearing of lines and dropping of the rest of the blocks above the cleared lines, we can act upon all of these cubes individually. I don't want these to be in a group anymore once the block has landed. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a new actor here, new blueprint actor, B underscore single block. And I'll open that up. I'm gonna add a static mesh. And I'm gonna set the static mesh here to SM underscore cube underscore 01. And uh, so this is our basic single block actor. There's not much to it, but what we will wanna do is adjust the color. So the, the color matches the incoming color of the uh, falling block. So I'm just gonna go to variables here and add block color, set the variable type to a linear color, and I'll select instance editable and expose on spawn. And then uh, pretty simple, what we wanna do with that is just on the event graph, uh, we'll say on begin play, we'll say set vector parameter, um, set vector parameter value on materials, static mesh, and the parameter name is gonna be glow color, and the parameter value will be this block color. All right, and so we've got this actor here with this single block and the ability to pipe in a block color and it's gonna set that on begin play and that's all it is. And what I wanna do is make sure that we set this uh, collision type. So I'll search for collision on the static mesh here and we're gonna set this one to uh, block all so that it uh, sets it up here as a world static object. So now this is gonna to respond to the line trace the same as uh, the floor of the uh, playing area responds to the line trace. So now blocks should be able to land on each other. Uh, and so what I wanna do is in the falling block actor, we'll go back to the event graph and uh, down here just before we spawn our new block, I'll just uh, unhook that for now. Um, and first what we'll do is, again, iterate through our default scene root, get children components, and we'll use a for each loop. And for each component of the block, we wanna make one of those uh, single block actors. So I'll say spawn actor from class, uh, single block. And the transform, I'll split the pin here and we're gonna plug in the location from each of these cubes. So get world location, plug it in here. And uh, the block color, we wanna plug in our block color for this falling block. 
All right. Uh, and then after that's completed, now we want to spawn our new block. And in fact, we want to uh, destroy this actor because this actor has already now contacted the ground or another block. We've spawned a single block actor in the place of each of the cubes that make up this actor. So we're basically done with this actor. Now we want to say destroy actor and the target is self. All right, so that basically uh, covers creating the single blocks from each landed falling block. And so let's check out the functionality now. I suppose I could have sped up the drop timer for uh, testing purposes, but we'll just leave it for now. And hopefully this L is gonna land on this T block and stop. And yes, it is. So that's basically how we want it to operate. And that's what I wanted to uh, cover and introduce in this video. And so in the next video, we're gonna look at the introducing the ability to move these pieces laterally left and right with the keyboard or whatever inputs. And uh, also to be able to rotate the pieces uh, to different orientations so we can start playing the game here properly and making our actual uh, Tetris lines. Okay. Uh, so that basically covers it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.